Before we get into today's video, I would like to thank all of my lovely channel members and especially my lovely darling stewards. Bella Mare, Husky HD, Hopeful, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you for your support and also a huge thank you for all of my darling mates for your continued support. Now I hope you enjoy the video and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. It was relatively late at night when Lucifer's personal butler, Priminger, entered the royal torture chambers. It had been months since it had gotten a good cleaning and Lucifer was very particular about the dungeon's cleanliness. And Priminger was only let into the torture chamber when Lucifer hasn't, verifiably, entered them in ten years. The butler wasn't 100% sure what it entirely meant, however, he was in no position to pry. And ten years on the dot had now passed. As such, it was time for spring cleaning. Using his immeasurable power, the butler began commanding cleaning utensils like servants as they brushed, washed, polished and cleaned. While he carefully inspected each torture device for rust, dents and damages. For instance, Lucifer's bronze bull needed a good rinsing, flushed out the dried up grime out of the Iron Maidens and even sharpened the various tools and blades. Yet, it wasn't until Priminger proceeded into the torture chamber's back rooms when finally something actually shook him. Not to the core, of course. It was more due to a minor inconvenience. On a clothing rack were various leather and latex outfits of Lucifer's ex-wife Lilith. The imp discovered a skin suit. This wouldn't be too out of place in an S&M dungeon, of course, but in hell, skin suits had occasionally terrible implications. In other words, he was obliged on checking the skin's heartbeat. Carefully, Priminger removed the skin suit from the rag and spread it out on a nearby table. Judging by certain aspects of it, it was quite obviously female. Analyzing it, he stared the thing up and down until it twitched very subtly too. The imp sighed, finally placing a hand on his suit's chest. There was no heartbeat, of course, but the imp felt the unmistakable presence of a soul. Sighing deeply, Priminger wrapped the skin suit up before throwing it on his shoulder. Snapping his fingers, he immediately teleported into his master's workshop, where Lucifer was working on his rubber duckies. My lord, said Priminger as he bowed deeply. Ah, Prim! shouted Lucifer joyfully. I was just about to ask for some tea. Lucifer turned around and then crossed his arms. What the me is that? Some souls in hell were condemned to worse fates than others. From the common false imp, which was basically just a person with horns, to monstrosities of sin, large, overweight things with hands for a head, eyes bulging out of their stomach and teeth growing out of their fingertips. But those were rare, a fate reserved for only the most vile of being. Yet some souls were punished harsher for lesser crimes. And those included skin suit demons. As the name implied, they had the appearance of someone's removed skin. And when touched, they felt like cheap latex. But in fact, this 
thing was a living, breathing soul. Skinsu demons often appeared out of nowhere. No fiery entrance to hell for them. They were found in gutters, sewers, and other dark and miserable places. Their only solace was the fact that they were completely unaware of anything happening around them. They had only one ability, though considering the fact that this ability had no upper ceiling, could be very powerful in the wrong hands. If any sentient humanoid being would wear the skin suit demon, be they angelic, demonic, or once human. In the case I wanted to, or was forced to wear one of these living suits, they would awaken out of their dormancy. Once both feet and hands were filled in. Afterwards, the suit would envelop the person wearing them like a warm, soft flesh prison. It would adjust its form to any shape and body size, as long as hands and feet fit, and even accommodate for tails and horns by leaving holes, once fully enveloped. The skin suit would then awaken and take full control over whatever thing wore them. Additionally, any power the wearer possessed would be subsumed by them, as long as the skin suit was worn. But why would someone willingly be consumed by such a being? Should the skin suit demon be sedated before being worn, the wearer would keep full motor function. And in this state, any experience the demon had would be shared with the skin suit. And things such as drugs, alcohol and even sex would double, creating a sensory overload and addiction-free state of euphoria. Skin suit demons, when discovered, were usually immediately filled with regular garden worms. As through years of trial and error, as that was seemingly the only a functional alternative to actually being worn by another being. The worms would take on the role of muscles and even condense at the center of limbs to form rudimentary bones. And the skin suit demon Priminger just discovered was in fact you. You went by the name of Poppy, and his loose skin suit had in fact been purchased by Lilith, and then promptly forgotten. Since Lilith was gone already for seven years, plus the three extra years until Primager was allowed to clean the torture chamber, there was no real point of measurement aside from those ten years. Since you weren't filled with worms, you were in a permanent dormant state and would not know yourself. Lucifer ordered Priminger to fill you up with worms for an interrogation. The slimy beast squirmed within your skin. Priminger was glad his master wasn't seeing this. Your limbs twisted as they were filled with their new mass, churning and squishing as the worms took form. Your right arm swirled around in the air until it blew up like a balloon. And finally... You stood up. You coughed, out of breath. Well, technically not required for your body, it was a reflex from when you were human that was unable to be unlearned. As you gathered yourself, you quickly realized the position you were in, and your hands turned to fists. The butler, meanwhile, raised his head to the side, looking down at you. But he relaxed his muscles when he heard the unmistakable noise of tears hitting the stone floor. He stepped next to you. Excuse me. He started. With a haunted expression, you looked up at him. I'm required to ask this. Why are you crying? Your lips quivered. They promised me. He had said so quiet it was almost a whisper that I'd never have to be used as a worm bag again. 
The imp swallowed a large glob of bile. You're the one who purchased me. I do not purchase demons. I do not require that. Right. You're an imp. Primitive's yellow eyes were judging you harshly. Sure, he muttered. Regardless of that, my master has given me three tasks. Task one is to revive you. The second is to inform you of what happened since your dormancy. The third is to bring you to him. Feel free to tell me whatever you feel like sharing. Understood. Can I please have some clothes first? The imp stepped to the side, revealing folded clothes. How convenient. They turned out to be a white button-up shirt, black sweatpants and black sandals. Reluctantly you put them on, only to realize that they fit you perfectly. I hope my measurements were correct. I only had rolled your skin to work with with measurements. Did you make this yourself? The imp exhaled through his nose, amused. No, I merely tried the leftover clothes of my master's daughter. It fits perfectly. You looked at him. And wait, you really just measured by my empty skin? He nodded. Wow. You're good. I'm a butler, ma'am. If I did a bad job, I would be doing something else. Like what? He asked without thinking. And yet the imp took it serious and went into thought. Perhaps but my relationship with my son is aqua, though I don't feel like experiencing the cold of Siberia. You tilted your head. Pardon? I apologize, ma'am. Just not much love thinking out loud. Now, please, I have questions for you, too. The imp, Priminger, spent a long, drawn-out while asking you questions. What was more, an interrogation. And you answered every question honestly. As something in the back of your mind told you that he could smell lies, and if you dared, he'd punish you with zero abandon. With each arch, though, however, the imp's demeanor changed. Not by much, no. The emotions he radiated, however, almost made him 180 turn by the time all questions were answered. And finally, you dared to ask a counter-question. Where am I? The interrogation had happened in what seemed to be a grand dining hall. Behind you was a large table with white tablecloth and two chairs on it. The ceiling was covered in gold, and paintings of regal-looking demons decorated the walls. The only exit, aside from the hall's windows, was a large and red double door behind the table. You are currently located inside the royal castle of the Circle. R royal castle? Was I purchased by Satan? Preminger shook his head. Uh, to be more precise, his wife, Lilith. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must bring the lord of the house. He must be dying of curiosity. Priminger pointed at the table behind you. You followed his finger with your gaze. Please sit while you wait. Thank you. The imp bowed before you, before snapping his fingers teleporting away. In a rather matter-of-fact way as well. No smoke or sound, just instantly vanishing. As if he blinked out of existence. With a foul feeling in your gut, probably caused by the worms or your anxiety, maybe both, you sat down at the table, your hands folded in your lap. But the silence wasn't long, as the door was soon kicked open by none other than Lucifer Morningstar, the devil himself. He was handsome, even though he was a little short when it came to his height. He was blonde with a piercing gaze and a beautiful white suit. I have arrived! 
he shouted like a showman, only to then look at you with big round puppy eyes as he rushed over to your side. Taken aback, you leaned against the chair. Ah, you must be Miss Poppy, the skin suit, right? You nodded perplexed. It's good to meet you finally. Uh, Primager! Yes, master. From out of nowhere, the imp appeared next to you, making you shriek. Bring us some food, will ya? The imp bowed and vanished just as quickly as he arrived. Now that he is busy, the king of hell leaned forward, gripping your face, pulling, pinching as he inspected you. You chose not to resist. So you are the last thing my wife purchased before she vanished. Hmm. He then stepped away with his hands on his hip. He smiled, but you could see a vague pain in his eyes. I want to know all about you. Didn't like the imp? Who, Prim? Ah, well, I didn't listen. I wanted to hear everything out of your mouth. This was going to be interesting. So let's start with who you were, all right? Ordered Lucifer after sitting down at the table. M my leash? You said that so questioningly. Oh, you were adorable. I love it when Snowborn treat me with respect. You have no idea how rotten most of you are. Keep going. I like being called Liege. Uh, um, well, my Liege, uh, what I'm going to tell you may not be as entertaining as you may think, sir. Still, his face was filled with childlike excitement. Um, okay, uh, when I was human, I lived in America. Yes, yes, and your primary sin was pride with your secondary being sloth. Huh? Skinso demons are demons of sloth, and yet you're on the pride layer. As such, your mother's sin is pride, and your secondary is sloth. I... I guess... I mean, it's not my fault my family was rich. <laughs> what was I supposed to do not spend my pocket money? Lucifer nodded. My dad always said I lacked the greed to become rich. So he just gave me money until I stopped bothering him. Um, I died in my thirties, uh, mid-thirties to be specific. Sighing, you hung your head for a moment. I was driving drunk. You're right, that isn't anything special, Poppy. Lucifer tilted his head. <laughs> in life you probably thought your shit don't stink, huh? You refuse to answer that. Oh well. His questions continued until Priminger arrived with plates of meat, salad, and rice. First placing one before Lucifer and then putting one before you. Seeing the devil eat calculated and gentlemanlike was a stark contrast to his casual and pompous questioning of your character. Meanwhile, you stared at the meat on your fork. It smelled divine, looked juicy. And you really wanted to eat it. Yet as you stared at it, the mental image of thousands of worms wiggling over it as they slowly devoured it was ruining your appetite. It took Lucifer ten minutes to speak up about this. Don't tell me you're vegan. If you're vegan, you're out. No, no, I'm, I'm just... I, I just... You looked at your arms, expecting to see bulging movements of the worms, but of course, that's not how this worked. But the knowledge they were there was enough. After all, practically speaking, these things were right now a hive mind that was keeping you awake and moving. It should not bother you, but it did. So why aren't you eating? Finally, you looked up. I can see them. Lucifer nodded his head. I'm sorry. You're being not what I've been told the devil is like. I mean, you're feeding me, and here I'm unable to swallow a single bite. In fact, I think I want to vomit. Please don't. The moment the word vomit passed your lips, you understood what your problem was. I'm sorry. Preminger told me you have issues with your... Uh, Feeling. And after a short silence, he smiled. Uh, look, 
Lilith purchased you rightfully, alright? You are technically my property, therefore. I mean, she has been gone for a while, I suppose. He forced a smile. I guess I just want to know why she brought you. You were in our dungeon, which means... You know... Husband and wife things... You looked him in the eyes. She brought me as a sex toy. He gobbed loud enough for you to hear. To be fair, I can see why. It was one of the possibilities the skin seller said could happen to me. I still signed the contract. I was unaware when she brought me. I didn't even know I was purchased in the first place. You could tell by Lucifer's face that this was not what he was thinking about. And so he just blurted it out. Do you think she wanted me to wear you? This caused you to blush hard. Well, it was possible for a female skin suit to be worn by a man. In fact, it actually worked. Probably better than intended. At least that's what you've been told. Lucifer fell back in his chair. Wait, do you want to wear me? Lucifer knew that thinking about this for more than a second was a bad sign for his masculinity. Which made the ten seconds he thought about it feel like hours to him. No. Yes. Uh, no. You blinked. Uh, um. Yes. No. Uh, Prim. Yes, master. The imp stepped from behind your chair. Stop doing that! You shouted, frightened at Primager, but he just walked past you. I need you to toss a coin for me. Out of his breast pocket, Priminger pulled a shiny silver coin. On one side, it depicted the head of an octopus. On the other, it was a silhouette of a hooded figure. Prim launched the coin in the air with his thumb and caught it in his palm a second later. It's heads, sire. Lucifer sighed. It was four hours later. Lucifer was sitting on the bed of Lilith's personal quarters, his heart pounding. He was only dressed in his underpants. As for the door, suddenly stepped Priminger unannounced. Sir, I must say this request is unusual even for you. Please, just help me put her on. Priminger rolled his eyes. You yeah, had just spent the last three hours cleaning your body in accordance to health and safety standards, meaning he got rid of the worms, slime, and anything else that was inside your skin, before drying you. Prim sighed and took Lucifer's right hand before gently shoving your hand over his. Sire, if she subsumes your powers, this could change hell forever. Are you aware of that? Lucifer didn't answer as Prim now shoved the other hand onto Lucifer. You can still stop this, sire. Lucifer didn't stop Prim, and soon your skin began to wrap itself up around his body, starting with his legs on its own, going up his spine slowly, carefully. It felt incredible was warm and soft and just a little slimy, but in a good way, in a comforting way, almost like a mother's womb. This feeling was unbelievable, and soon he could feel an unfamiliar weight on his chest. Unintentionally, he cupped it. Oh, he think they're even bigger than Lilith's. Thankfully, Prim had left when the process had started to happen on its own. She definitely got you for me. Carefully, he pinched his chest, causing him to moan. Scared, he slapped his hand on his mouth. Oh, oh god, he really just did that. Lucifer definitely didn't want Priminger to seem like this. Uh, 
Poppy, are you aware? He asked cautiously. Yes. Wait, I, I thought I was supposed to like be unable to move, like you were supposed to move and stuff. Asked Lucifer. Creepy. The thought that not only was there another person in his head right now, but technically he was in that person's body as well, it was quite overwhelming for his brain. It's as you said, you're too powerful to be controlled by me. Lucifer gulped. How do you feel? He asked. Honestly, your body feels wonderfully warm. And I like the weight of your skeleton. It's heavy and nice. He exhaled. So are you feeling what I'm feeling? He asked. Oh, sorry. I think that's me. I haven't felt full in so long. The weight of your body inside me and all that. Can you place a hand on our chest? You sighed in response to his movements. No, not that chest. Chest. I, I mean, I mean, the other chest. Oh, yes. Thank you. I can feel our heartbeat. Ah, this is the best. I thought it's a little fast, isn't it, Lucifer? You purred. Yeah, I think so, too. And do you want to do something about it? Explore this feeling, I mean. Considering you have girl parts now, do you want to use them? He gulped. And then finally crawled over to Lilith's nightstand. Ah, so even ancient beings of legend, of immeasurable power, keep their special toys in their nightstands. Good to know. You muttered sarcastically as Lucifer twisted at the nightstand's key. And as he pulled out its drawer, your eyes widened in anticipation and just a little bit of horror at what you were seeing. Are you sure you want to shove something that big? Yeah, I mean, it's a once in an eternity thing, isn't it? He interrupted you. And then he grasped one of Lilith's special toys. <laughs>